Well, I've done a lot of tricks. Now it's time for some treats. There's no such thing as a holiday without holiday treats, and Halloween is no exception. In fact, being the horror fan that I am, and the Halloween fan that I am, Halloween is maybe even the most treat-worthy holiday of them all. So I'm making some treats. I'm more of a cook than I am a baker, but I still know my way around the kitchen a little bit. So today I'm going to be baking cookies, cupcakes, jalapeno poppers, and caramel apples, each with a Halloween theme. We're going to start off with caramel apples. I have my apples chilling in the fridge because we want cold apples to start. Here I have half a teaspoon each of pure vanilla extract and salt, four tablespoons of butter, a cup of white corn syrup. I have one and three-fourths cup uh, heavy cream, and two cups of light brown sugar. And for toppings later, I have peanuts, walnuts, and sprinkles. I also have skewers for the apples, which we'll get to in a minute. In the meantime, let's get started with the caramel itself. Into the pot goes the heavy cream. In goes the light corn syrup. In goes the brown sugar. And in goes the butter. Lastly, the salt. These will get heated over a medium heat until the butter is melted. While it's heating, we need to make sure to stir and make sure everything is well mixed. Good. The butter has melted. So now what we need to do is take some water in our pastry brush and brush down the sides of the saucepan. And we go in with the candy thermometer. We are looking for this to get between 235 and 240 degrees. While we're waiting for that, let's get the apples going. Here I have some great apples, and it's not cooking if you're not juggling. All right, I have some uh, Granny Smith and Red Delicious. I also have an onion because it's not Halloween without tricks, so I'm going to be disguising an onion in with the apples. I've topped and tailed and peeled the onion. I've washed and chilled the apples. Now all they need are skewers. The stems have been removed from the apples, so the skewers go right in where the whoops. The skewers go right in where the stems used to be. Same is true with the onion. Also gets its skewer. Check my temperature. We're getting close, but not quite there yet. You'll notice we are not stirring while this is getting up to its temperature. That smells great. It's bubbling. The reason we're not stirring is because we don't want to introduce any more air than we need to. Air bubbles into it. I'm going to watch this like a hawk as soon as it gets to its temperature. We're going to add the vanilla in and take it off the heat. And it is ready. Off the heat. And vanilla in. Make sure to stir well. Excellent. And the thermometer can go away. Now that this has come up to temperature, come off the heat, and the vanilla is in, it needs to sit for about 10 minutes or so until it's thickened to a nice enough consistency that it can be used to coat our apples. And while I'm waiting for that to thicken, I'm going to put some wax paper down in this tray so that the apples won't stick to the tray when they're coated with the caramel. Okay, I'm back and the caramel has finally thickened up. It took a little bit longer than I anticipated, so I took the opportunity while I was waiting to wash some of my dishes. Remember kids, a tidy chef is a happy chef. In any case, we are now ready to attempt coating these apples. Let's see how well it works. Make sure we get it all the way around. Not quite as dark as I anticipated, but we'll see if it darkens as it hardens up. Okay, next up are sugar cookies. I have cookie cutters over there that are ready. I'm going to get started with the dough well in advance because this is going to take quite a while. Once again, all of my ingredients are la laid out. To begin with, I'm putting butter, granulated sugar. I'm going to mix and bowl. This is going to go onto my mixer for five minutes or so. While that's going, I'm going to take my flour, 
along with baking powder and salt. And we're just going to whisk all of those together. Alright, so now that's done, I just need to wait for the mixer. Okay, now that the butter and sugar mixture is fairly light and fluffy, I'm going to put in one egg and a teaspoon of vanilla. And finally, with the mixture on low, the flour mixture goes in. The cookies are out. They are now cooling. While they're cooling down, we're going to make icing for the cookies. To do that, we're going to use our stand mixer. Into the bowl go four cups of confectioner's sugar. Along with that, we're going to take a fourth cup of meringue powder. And one third of a cup of water. At this time, you would also add whatever coloring you need, but I'm sticking with white, so I don't need to add anything. That goes onto our stand mixer with the whisk attachment. Start slow so it doesn't erupt out of there. We're gradually going up to a medium speed, and we're going to keep that going until peaks form. Now we need to divide this into two portions, one thicker and one flood icing. So we're going to take about two-thirds to three-quarters of this, and transfer to a separate bowl. And this will become our flood icing. That should be about right. Put that to the side, we'll use it later. To this flood icing, we're going to very slowly add water, just about a teaspoon at a time, until it's the right consistency. Okay, that seems just about right. Still thick, but runny enough that it can fill a space. At this point, I've put each of the icing mixtures into a pastry bag, and we're ready to start icing the cookies. We're going to use the thicker mixture to create a border, and then we're going to fill with the thinned mixture. Once they're frosted with this white, we're going to let them set up for a little while before we add some black to finish the picture. Okay, now that these have set up a bit, we're going to take our black icing and add just a little bit of detail to each of these. You know, with that black icing on, there we have it. Three different shapes of Halloween sugar cookies. I'm going to move on to the cupcakes. In this case, I have a boxed cake mix, but instead of water, I'm going to add milk, and instead of oil, I'm going to add butter, melted butter. Should make it a richer cupcake. So I'm going to mix all that together, and I already have my cupcake pans with liners, so I'm ready to go. The oven is preheating, so all I need to do is mix everything together. In with the eggs, and the butter, and the milk. We'll carefully mix this all together. We can already see that lovely, almost blood red color, which is what we want. I could have used a power beater, but this will be my workout for the year. Alright, that should be good. It's time to distribute into the pans. I think the easiest way to do that is just to use the ice cream scooper. Okay, cupcake pans are ready. Oven is preheated. Time for them to go in. They need to go in for about 16 to 19 minutes. Okay, the cupcakes are almost done. While they finish up, I'm going to make the glass, the clear glass candy. What I have is sugar, to which I am going to add light corn syrup, and a teaspoon of clear flavoring. You could use whatever you want. In my case, it happens to be an orange flavor. These just get mixed together. It's a bit of an oogie mess, as Annie Wilkes would say. It doesn't have to be perfect. The reason it doesn't have to be perfect is these are going to go into the microwave and they will be stirred throughout this process. Just give them a little bit of a head start there. Cover with plastic wrap. And this goes into the microwave for three minutes. While that's going, I'm going to check on the cupcakes. Almost. 
in these last minute or so while I wait for the cupcakes, I should point out I have a cookie sheet. It's been lined with wax paper and coated with nonstick cooking spray. That's to keep the hard candy from sticking to anything, hopefully. Okay, take this out of the microwave, and I'm using these to make sure I protect my hands because this is going to be hot as hell. And this just requires a quick stir to mix that corn syrup and the flavoring and the sugar. And we recover with another piece of plastic. Here, that's back in the microwave. This goes for another three minutes, although I need to watch carefully to make sure it doesn't go off color in that time. While that's getting started, the cupcakes are ready to come out of the oven. And those will just rest. I think that should be good. Carefully remove the plastic without burning myself. Give it a little bit of a stir. And then, we just pour right onto our tray into a nice thin layer. This stuff is very hot and very sticky, and I assure you, you do not want this on your fingers. Spread it a little bit thinner, and there we go. Now this needs to sit for several hours until it gets nice and hard, at which point I'll be able to break it apart. All right, I'm back. I took a few minutes to take a little break, but now the cupcakes are cooling behind me, and I'm ready to start on the icing. I have white chocolate chips, butter, cream cheese, salt, vanilla, and powdered sugar. So we're going to mix this stuff all together and we're going to get started. To begin with, butter goes in along with the cream cheese and the salt and the vanilla. Mix those on low until it's creamy. While it's on low, we're going to slowly incorporate the powdered sugar. Now that it's starting to mix, we turn it up. And that should be almost ready. We're going to pause for a minute and melt our uh, white chocolate chips. They're not quite done yet, but they just get a stir. We're going to go 30 seconds at a time until these are nice and smooth. As you can see now, this is quite smooth, so it's ready to go in. That goes into the frosting. And let that start mixing. Gradually turning up the speed. And it should be done. There we go. Lovely frosting for our cupcakes. We also need our edible blood to top our cupcakes. For that, we're going to start off with a can of condensed milk. This is uh, sweetened condensed milk, I should say. To that, we add a teaspoon of clear flavoring. In this case, I have a rum flavor. I like the rum flavor because I think it's going to be a nice contrast with the orange of the candy. It might sound crazy, but trust me, it's actually pretty good. Then we take our red gel food coloring. Now with this food coloring, a little bit goes a long way, so we're going to put just a little bit at a time and stir in between. Also, just a drop each of blue and green will help darken the red, and that'll help make it just a little bit more blood-like. Instead of the blue and green, if you have black, that would be even better. I don't. Still not quite there yet. We're going to use more of this red. And there we go. It doesn't perfectly mimic the color of blood, but it's clear what it's meant to stand for, and that's good enough for me. And when you're using this, make sure that you use this immediately before serving. This will last in the fridge for a while, but it does need to be refrigerated. It won't last out of the refrigerator. To frost the cupcakes, we are going to use a pastry bag. Okay, now what we need to do is break up this hard candy. It's been sitting for several hours, so hitting it with a knife should break it into crazy shards. And indeed it did. Find the biggest pieces and then we want to hit them a couple of times. And a few of them may struggle to peel up from the wax paper, but if you just lift from underneath, you should be fine. And all you need to do to serve is take a couple pieces of your broken glass, put that into your cupcake, and then drizzle with your fake blood. 
just like so. Now all of this will last for a while, but it won't last presented like this. The candy and the fake blood both just go into containers and they can be stored in the fridge for up to about a week. I don't know about y'all, but I'm going to eat these faster than a week. And the last item, as I fight exhaustion from being up all night baking, is a platter of Halloween jalapeno poppers shaped like mummies. I have my jalapenos ready, the oven is preheating to 400 degrees, I have all my ingredients in place. I'm going to start with the filling. In the bowl goes 8 ounces of shredded jack cheese, 8 ounces of cream cheese, 2 scallions finely chopped, and half a teaspoon of salt. Mix all of that well. Okay, the cheese filling is well mixed. We can turn our attention to the jalapenos. The trick here is to cut them in half. We're going to seed them and try to leave the stems intact as much as possible. I'm going to start just by halving them. You want these as close to in half as you can, although they don't need to be exact. Then we need to clean out the seeds and the connective tissues from the inside. You can use either your paring knife or a spoon for that job. Whichever tool you use, make sure that you don't puncture all the way through your pepper. You only want the insides to come out. It's also important to remember the entire pepper is edible, so if these aren't perfect, it doesn't really matter. You just want to get as much as you can. I may not be much of a baker, but I'm a decent home chef, and peppers are one of my favorite ingredients, so I feel a lot more at home doing this than I did on some of the other recipes. Alright, peppers are halved, peppers are cleaned, I'm going to go wash my hands before I hurt myself. There was this one time I was working with Carolina Reapers, very hot peppers, and I didn't realize I still had some on my hands, and I went to the bathroom, and that's an experience I'll never forget, and we're not going to repeat it with these jalapenos. The next item we need are crescent dinner rolls that we're going to use to wrap the jalapeno poppers. You could make this yourself. I'm going with a store-bought one in this case. All right, there they are. We need to roll these out. One thing you'll notice about these is they're perforated into triangle shapes, but we want rectangles, so we're going to pinch these together at the perforations to seal them together. Don't be afraid to give them some, some work if necessary. You don't want your jalapeno poppers falling apart. These also don't need to look perfect. Just as close to a rectangular shape as you can get. Then you can use either your knife or a pizza cutter and cut them into vertical strips. And you want them about a centimeter wide or so. And they are ready. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our cheese filling, a small spoon. We're going to put our filling into our jalapeno. Get it nice and full. In fact, you want it slightly overflowing. Then you're going to take one of your wrappers, one of your crescent rolls, and wrap it around your jalapeno, leaving a gap in the middle for the eyes, and then wrapping tighter everywhere else. Like so. Pinch it a little bit at the end so it stays in place, and then we're going to set it to the side. And we will repeat for all of our half jalapenos. If you have a bigger one, don't be afraid to use two of your lengths of crescent roll. And that's the last one. Perfect. Okay, now I have a large uh, cookie sheet lined with paper. I'm going to give each of these an egg wash with my pastry brush and then just lay them out on the cookie sheet. Okay, and there they are. Now they're going into the oven for eight to ten minutes. Okay, they're fresh out of the oven. All that's left is to give them their eyes. So we just take the eyeballs and just press them into the space that we left. Well, these will last for about a week in the fridge. Just pop them back in the oven until they're warm and they're good to go. These eyeballs won't survive in the oven, so only put the eyeballs on as you're ready to use them. 
And there you have a perfect set of Halloween treats. Let me know in the comments what sort of baking you've been doing for the Halloween season. And until next time, take care and stay scared.